Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about frameworks and backend development and depending on them. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how bad is it if a new software developer can't develop a, a web application without a framework? And the short answer is usually not very bad at all. In PHP, it might be an exception. Let me explain. So PHP has something that is very important, and that is a history. And every single thing has a history. And that's why I think that this question is very interesting, because the thing that dictates what you should know and what you shouldn't know within a given context, be it programming or whatever, is decided based on a very subjective understanding of a community, of what is basically what you need to know in order to do the job well. And what's interesting, I think, about this is that each community makes up their own rules. Everybody does. Every single community has their own game that they're playing. And the game that they're playing is, all right, so we do work in this way, and in order for you to be able to call yourself one of us, you should be able to do about these sorts of things. It's a sphere of things. If you're on the very religiously zealot area in the very, very middle of this little sphere of things, then you do basically all the things correctly, right? And if you're in the outskirts, you're always in the risk of having someone on the inside or in the middle calling you out and saying that, oh, you don't do that right, or you should be doing it this way or so forth. You have somebody who's telling you that you, for some reason, you don't really fit into be, uh, of being one of these true believers. And it's the same in programming communities. So the reason why I mentioned PHP is because PHP has a divide between in this opinion. There are people who will claim to you that, well, PHP, well, it was developed to use to be a hyperpage solution where you go to one domain URL of some sort, or, and then you hit one of these pages and then you just render that out. And you don't actually need a framework to be fairly efficient, proficient at this thing. Like technically, you can do PHP development, and I actually have done PHP development without a framework at a very large scale because it wasn't really necessary. The only thing I th we used by, when I was working at my previous job was uh, we were using Symf uh, Symfony for route management. That was it. Like we only had a route controller and all the other stuff we kind of just dealt with. So that's one part. That, that's one part of the community. But the other part of the community are using frameworks to do their job. But if if we just take a we go outside of this community and we go and we have a look at something like say Node.js. Well, in Node.js, not a single person, I would argue, on average, would expect you to be able to build a working REST API with just the vanilla interfaces. We Pretty much everybody uses Express or some other flavor of a framework in order to do this job or to do this work. And they do so because, if we're honest here, the support for doing most normal tasks in the vanilla version or the standard libraries is pretty poor. Like you can't set up a, a HTTP connection and you can take in requests and all that good stuff, but you don't really have any routing and so forth. You have to write a lot of that boilerplate yourself. And because this community of in Node.js has decided that, well, this is below us, we shouldn't really have to deal with this. It's more important for us to be able to work efficiently and so forth. Well, then we just add a layer on top and then we just decide that this is the bottom. This is the, like, this is the minimum thing that you need to know in order to be be a Node.js developer. And if you look at C or C++, well, the, then the rules change again. Because in that scenario, you might have people who will say that, well, if you're going to be able well, you, you use a, a framework, what are you talking about? We're about performance. We're about low level details. We're about knowing how to do all these things yourself so that you actually are a good developer. Then it, the context changes again. If you go to C Sharp, well, then it's all about .NET or .NET Core. And then you're expected to know that stuff, but you're not expected to necessarily be able to do it without it. And this is the trend or the connection I hope that you will start to see when you start looking at different 
communities within software development. Everybody makes their own rules for what is acceptable and what's not acceptable. Everybody has their own ecosystem of tooling and opinions and values that dictates whether or not this is okay or you should know this or if you shouldn't. Now, one of the hard, which I think is, I think this is hilarious. I think that, and it's, in many cases, I think that this is a lack of insight on the per on some people, where I've seen people from different development communities who talk about how obvious, how easy it is to use this or that tool within their community, and we should really standardize our work process around doing this thing, and it's so important that we do this thing, and they and they promote all these great ideas and talk as if it's uh, obvious that everybody should know these things. And the second we start, uh, they start talking about front end or JavaScript, they just kind of throw up their hands and go, "Well, it's basically chaos. Nobody knows what's going on." And I kind of go, "Well." No, that's not really true. I f just think that you f fail to realize something. And the thing that you fail to realize is that the same thing is true in JavaScript. There are tons of tools that everybody should quote unquote know. It's just that there's so many of them that you can't keep track. And that is something that I find hilarious. I think it's hilarious that whoever is talking about what you should know and what you shouldn't know, well, they're always, they always seem to fail to see the pattern between these different communities that we're talking about. And the pattern is that in each community, they decide themselves what you should know and what you shouldn't know. So in order for me to answer your question, should you know how to use a framework in order to be a, like a starter beginner programmer, I will say that for the vast majority of of communities, no. Pretty much all of them are using a framework depending on how you define, define that framework. If you go to Go, creating a web application shouldn't require a framework because the standard libraries are so well developed that they're, I'm not saying a framework, but they're practically a framework. They're very, very well suited for that. PHP, well, then the, I would say that the, there are better ways than to just use vanilla PHP in order to do web development these days, but there are still quite a lot of companies who believe that this is the way that you should be doing it because of historical reasons, because this is how it started out. And frameworks kind of came, came along at the later stage. If you go to Node.js, it's basically weird. I would even say that most would call it an anti-pattern. Anti if you start to, to, to develop a REST API without Express or some of the other frameworks. It's super weird. And don't even get me started about C Sharp. If you're doing C Sharp development or a web application without .NET or .NET Core, I think that most would feel that that's kind of weird. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing all this extra work? And this is where it's all what it's all about. In Java land, you have, a fifth, you have also a split. Or you, should you use the the enterprise edition, like we should you just use the native libraries or should you use Spring? Who knows? It's up for discussion what you should know and what you shouldn't know and it varies depending on who is making the evaluation. So what I want you to take away from this is that in order for you to answer the question, should you know how to set something up without a framework, you have to understand the culture of the language that you are dealing with. Because if you understand the culture of the language, you will start to understand the value system. And the value system is the important part because the people who are doing the hiring, they have these values. Some of them are perceptive enough to understand that there are good solutions and there are worse solutions. Because at the end of the day, it's, everything is a trade-off. If you decide to go with a framework, there are benefits, but there are also consequences that you are making a trade-off. And, and having the standpoint that, oh, I'm going to learn to do all of these things without the framework, well, if you're gonna do that for any other reason than the fact that you want to prove to yourself that you can, well, then there has to be some benefit to it. And in many cases, there is no real benefit to going without a framework. And that's why so many communities find it to be the standard, like that's the bottom, that's the bottom of the barrel for most uh, communities, to know how to use the framework and then build on top of that. Because it's simply not practical for everyday work to be underneath that bottom. You can if you wanted to, but it's just not practical. But in some situations, that doesn't factor in because it is practical enough, if that makes sense, such as in PHP or Go, that you are expected to be able to work without a framework. So 
I can't give you a more accurate answer than you have to understand the community of people that you're dealing with to understand where the bottom of the barrel is. Have a great day.